metal shavings and the magnet again. What is going on everyone? As you can see, I haven't done much of anything. <laughs> I've had the Challenger parked inside for the past couple weeks because it's been snowing and whatnot and I just really like that car and I like to keep it nice. So it's been in my way. Shop heater still doesn't work. It's been cold. I haven't done anything. <laughs> really need to get back to work on the car because it's the middle of February now. We still have things left to do on the roll cage. Every time I think I'm almost done, there's more parts to add. We still need our rear braces. We still need our anti-wheel intrusion bars. And then we need to gusset everything. I bought a set of dimple dies and a shop press. So we got gussets to make and holes to drill. And then we press the holes into a dimple. It's a 45 degree flare. So it looks cool. It's lighter and stronger. Uh, and I don't know where I want to start. I think I'm going to do the anti-wheel intrusion bars because they're going to be a bitch. I should have done them before I put this door bar in. Cause now I'm gonna get way down in here. <laughs> like I'm contemplating taking the pedal assembly out just so I can weld down there easier. Anyway, let's get to work. I should have done the anti-wheel intrusion bars before <laughs> I put in the door bars, but I really wanted to build the door bars, so I did. I like them. So now our anti-wheel intrusion bars, let's talk about them real quick. The anti-intrusion bars or wheel intrusion bars are intended for additional foot protection. All vehicles shall have anti-intrusion bars or wheel intrusion bars with one tube extending forward from each front down tube, one extending down from here, and one tube from the base plate forward to the firewall, but not penetrating any panel. No penetration, guys. So we got a clean up an area down here for our mounting plate. Now remember, your mounting plates cannot be any less than two inches on any one of its sides. I'm gonna bend mine a 90 and tie it in to this side panel too, just, just because, give it a little more strength. So, we're gonna cut it. As you can see, I, I told you I haven't done anything. I have all I did was cut those. I haven't even welded them in yet. Maybe I can lay in between the bars to get in there. Anyway, we need to clean up this area. We need this plate in here. Something like this. And then we're gonna have to cut and notch. We're gonna have one tube going, can you see? One tube going forward from the bottom. Then the rules say from the base plate, I don't know what they're considering the base plate. Does it need to be tied into the front of the rocker box? Or, I don't know. I'm gonna tie it into the, into the tube. And then another one at an angle, just like that, both sides. Now, these wheel intrusion bars, th these are for your, your own car's wheel intrusion for when you smash this thing into a wall, or what I do, when I smash it into a wall at a high rate of speed. My own front wheel, front end collision, doesn't come into the cabin and break my legs. Or, yeah, worse, I like my legs. So yeah, anti-wheel intrusion bars. And this is Formula formula D rules. You you may not need anti-wheel intrusion bars, but while you're here building the cage, it makes it safer. You might as well. I'm gonna cut some parts. So for our lower leg of the wheel intrusion bar, I'm just gonna run it straight out 90 degrees from the side hoop of the roll cage. So we just need one, one notch, 90 degrees to the pipe. We'll make two of these, one for each side of the car. And then I need to get two base plates made. And then I think we'll put in these lower part of the wheel intrusion bar, tack it in place with the base plate, make the top of it, tack it to the base plate, pull it out of the car. Ah! All right, so we need to mark out where this plate's gonna sit. This lower tube is gonna go straight forward. I'm gonna mount it as low as I can with being able to weld all the way around it. You always gotta try and remember things like that. Sometimes I get a little close. Show. You get this marked out so I know where to clean the paint and seam sealer off the car. More seam sealer to clean. Yay, so exciting. This is gonna be the easy side. <laughs> I lost my cap. All right, might as well start on the seam sealer. I just get a scraper, scrape what I can off, and then burn the rest. Ah! I need more tools. That seam sealer came off pretty easy, actually. I'm not even gonna bother burning that out. I just need to clean it. I need my ears. That's loud. Ah! Oh, what did I do with my part? Remember to test fit your parts. 
Whoopsie. Oh, that's nice. Clean the rest of it up with some scotch Bright on the tool. You don't want to sand too much on your BMW. They are really thin. <laughs> I'll, t I'll keep all the metal I can in these things. I got a jungle gym for adults. I should have brought my tape measure with me. Cause now we need a measurement. Show. The plate's at a 20 degree angle. So our cut needs to be at a 20 degree angle. So we're gonna measure from the center of the tube to that plate to the long side. We'll measure from the long side. Eleven and a quarter. We already got it notched, so we just need to cut it. Well, there's one leg of the uh, wheel intrusion barge. I'll get the top one built. I don't exactly know how I'm going to weld behind that. I mean, I welded all the way around the door bar, so... But now the door bar is kind of in my way. Oh, boy. Another reason why I should have done it before the door bars were in. Yeah. So I'll get the other one made, and uh, we'll move Well, luckily, on. guys, luckily... We finally get to start burning up some of our mistakes. Cause I need 16 inches of tube and I'm gonna start cutting sections of, of my mistakes apart so I can turn them into wheel intrusion bars. <whistles> Thought I lost it. Now we need to figure out the what angle this notch is going to be at, because it ain't going to be 90. Get my angle finder and back to the car. This thing. Thirty degrees. We're going to notch it at thirty. Get out of here. Ah, where's all my tools? I put it all away. Oh, why did I do that? I gotta go get my ratchet out of my truck. I have other ones. It's just not the one I want. All that, just to use a ratchet I like. I suppose that's why I buy them though. I'm gonna use my ears. You guys wanna see what I'm doing? I mean, you've seen it before. It's not really that exciting. It fits really nice. I could have just done this though. I need a length. There's the wheel intrusion bars, guys. We'll get that all cleaned up and get it tacked in place. So I think what I'm gonna do is tack these tubes in their position onto the plate. Oh man. I don't know how I'm gonna get behind there. I really wanna tack it all to that plate and then take the plate out of here and weld it all and then put it back in the car. I'm gonna try it. That's what I'm gonna try. Yeah, let's try it. 
Here goes nothing. Ah. <laughs> I forgot to turn the welder on. Crap. Ah. Okay, let's try it again. Now I gotta cut that plate out of there. I should have put my tacks for that in a different spot. Yeah, it's like put both these tacks up top and I could have just broke it out of there. But I got that one tack right there. Now I have to cut. Apparently I tacked it really well. I'm gonna go weld all of this outside the car. And then I'll just be able to weld the top around here. I'll be able to get the welder in there. Down here. Yeah. All right guys. Got it welded up. Good thing I did it outside the car. Because I'm not the best welder. I'm working on it. I'm not working on being the best. I'm just working on being a competent welder. <laughs> ah, that's not where I wanted it. Now I can just worry about welding the plate to the car instead of trying to weld all the tube walls down there and everything too. It's a good fit though. That'll work good. Hey, come back, light. Yeah. What the what the hell is going on? What the hell? Oh, that's broken. Huh. Now the light's done. Anyway, hopefully you guys saw it. The lights the light's not doing anything. I guess it's just dead. But yeah, anti-wheel intrusion. Protect your feet. You need them for the clutch and brake control. Well, we're going to try and weld this in. I know you guys can't see nothing. You can't see nothing, but I got to do something about content. I mean, what else am I doing here besides building a drift car? The driver's side is going to be so much more difficult. The pedals there and whatnot. They might have to come out. things again. It's okay though because it's probably in my brain. I was done. Well, <laughs> I gotta weld those. I don't want to weld those right now. I'm back everyone. It's a different day for me. Same video for you. I have progressed further on the car without you. Not much. Got the uh, passenger wheel intrusion bar done. Today I did the driver's side one. There's no reason to show you the same thing twice. Also, I got the driver's side main hoop rear support in. Remember, these can't be 
these have to be more than 30 degrees. You can't have them laying straight back or get them down. But I'm gonna show you a little trick what I use for a template to make some mounting plates. So I'll move you to the car. Keep watching. Okay, this is how I do this, everybody. Just keep watching. You're gonna get yourself some blue masking tape, green masking tape, whatever. Whatever you wanna use. You're gonna put your masking tape where your mounting plate is gonna go. Remember your mounting plates, every side has to be at least two inches. So in, any, no, any one of your sides of your mounting plate, it's gotta be two inches. It's gotta be two inches. Bam! Then we'll make some reference marks on it and we'll transfer it to a piece of steel. Oakley, Oakley, we've made our template. So what we're gonna wanna do next, I marked where uh, this gets bent. So, wait, does it sit in the car? It sits in the car this way. And then we're just gonna trace this out. I can't find my big square. My square with the big flange on it. It's driving me nuts. That's our bend line. Bend, cut, cut. I need a cutting disc. Whoa. Was this thing zoomed in? Brand new six incher. Suppose I better plug it in. Wow. That was lucky. Seriously though, if you're new to angle grinders, probably don't put a six inch wheel on it. There we go. There's our mounting plate. Stick it back in the car. Test fit your parts. Come on, I'll show you. Okay. Let's see how she fits. Ah! It goes right there. Can you see it? It looks like it could use a little more bend. Get a little, get a little tighter in the hole. We like the stuff tight. Nice tight fit. So yeah, that's the mounting plate. You can't go cut like cutting off this corner because that would create another side and then that side would not be two inches. So, don't do that. You can see on the other one, I just bent it over. Why doesn't this thing focus when I want it to? Yeah, there you go. I just bent it. I just followed the contour of the body, so you don't, I mean, because like I said, if you were to cut that off, it wouldn't be, that. that's a whole other side now. It's now a five-sided piece, and then that side's not two inches, and then you don't pass tech. <sighs> So, yeah, I gotta finish this. I'm still getting after it, guys. Still working on it. So it's another new day for me. Still the same video for you. Still gonna be on part six. I ran out of tube. Um, I only got that one driver's side main hoop rear support installed. It's fully welded and everything, but I'm out of tube. I don't have anything long enough to do the other one. I thought I did, which kind of sucks because I placed that one 
thinking, I guess, not knowing that I had two tubes that length, thinking I had two tubes that length, and I'd do the same thing on the other side. Not the case, but whatever. Order more tube. So now, I'm just gonna get some things welded that aren't welded. I'm in the mood to weld. It's a good time to be welding, if you really want to be. So, can you really see? I've been uh, notching the pinch weld. We gotta notch this pinch weld because Formula D rules says you cannot attach your door bars to the rocker. And since mine are pressed up tight against the rocker, I wanna make sure visibly you notice that I've done everything in my power not to attach it to it. So yeah, that stuff was just in the way of welding. I just put a, this sacrificial piece of uh, 095. <laughs> More of our 095 plate behind there. Grind it out how I want. And so on, so forth throughout the rest of the car. Yada, yada, yada. Weld the shit together. One less thing to do until I get some more tube. Payday is not till Friday. Which means I'm waiting. Cause, cause I spent all my money on rear duck club. Rear duck club. I spent all my money on some fenders for the fucking thing. I spent all my money on big, big, jeez. I spent all my money on big duck club fenders. Well, the whole quarter. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep welding, keep going. I got plenty to do before Friday. Already late in the day, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> late in the day. This is, this is my second shift. I already worked all day in somebody else's shop, but I get paid for that. Here I just spend money. I lost my ears! I've definitely learned a lot on this cage. This is like, <laughs> knowing I was going to do the door bars like this and I mean I easily could have done the math and known where the uprights were going to go. It would have been much nicer to notch these pinch welds prior to putting everything in here it would look a lot cleaner. I mean, that's that's gonna be a hard part to sand so I can paint all of this. Ush. That's why we do things though, so we learn. At least that's why I do them. I just spend all day at work doing what I know how to do. It was boring. what I get. I weld her up. One less thing to do. Oh, that was my knee. Alrighty. We're getting ready to tack in our door bar. Are they vertical tube sections? Yeah, I got something right. So we're going to tack these in and I don't know if you guys watched the fabricator series, but you should. We're going to tack what he calls in quadrants. If you can get to all four sides of it, you're going to attack the front side, the back side, and the front side and the back side. So yeah, on all of the tubes. It makes a good start and stop point for welding too, especially when you're MIG welding. But uh, we're going to get our magnet on here, make sure all these uprights stay 90 while we're tacking them so they look good. And yeah, you guys can't, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm actually on top of a moving blanket. You want to make sure you stay comfortable while you're doing this. That's why you guys always see me in tennis shoes because I wear steel toe boots all day in on concrete in another shop or in the field in the mud and it's just, it's hard. <laughs> I, I work on junk all day to come home to work on my junk. All, well not all night, but a lot of it. <clears throat> but I also do it because I enjoy it and it pushes my skills. Pretty much everything I do here, I've never done before. It's the only thing that keeps me interested. <laughs> Don't forget to clean your stuff before you weld it. Just some simple scotch bright Surface prep pad, whatever you want to call it. My noozle's a little dirty. I have never had to fiddle with the knobs on a hood so much as this one. It's the best lens I've ever used. It's a Radnor or whatever. I don't even know air gas brand, but it's always too tight Definitely be teaching myself how to take weld soon 
I would have already started my machine will TIG weld. So, I mean, I was going to start teaching myself, but then I'd have to change the machine back and forth, back and forth from MIG to TIG, MIG to TIG. And I only have a few hours every night to be playing with cars and YouTube. So it's problematic is what I'm trying to say. It's on my radar. This one needs a little work. Apparently somebody didn't test fit it enough times. Just the tiny amount of metal makes the biggest difference. Whoopsie. If you're gonna weld on top of a harbor flight, Jesus, man. It's only Monday. If you're gonna weld on top of a harbor freight moving blanket, they're extremely flammable. Just FYI. Good magnet. Woo boy. Those, <laughs> this tube on the front of the anti-wheel intrusion bar is gonna be tricky to weld. I seriously might cut part of the car off. I don't know yet. I might, this is a 250 amp MIG gun too. I'd hate to buy a smaller MIG gun just to weld this together when I should be learning how to TIG weld. I mean, it seems kind of asinine. So I think guys, what I'm thinking is this is gonna be part six. What I've done, I'll do the other passenger side, main hoop, rear support, without ya, because I did that one. I mean, it's just more notching and more cutting and more tubing and we got lots more of that to do in the trunk for the big duck club rear quarters. So uh, yeah. Let's go weld this together, part six. You guys will subscribe so you don't miss more stuff. Eventually we'll be done working on this BMW. We'll just be using it, maintaining it, and improving the power plant, probably with something with eight cylinders. Um, really all I have planned for this car, abuse and tire smoke, but I have other cool cars and projects and lots of other things. We'll get into some of those. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I always have a light shining where I'm welding. I don't know if it's me or what, but I can't see. I can't see when I'm welding. It's like, all I can see no matter what angle I look at is the puddle. I have no line to follow. I can't distinguish the definition between the two tubes. I don't know what the deal is. I need a lot of light source so I can see it. Oh yeah, and look, when I'm talking about V8s, this, that doesn't say LS. <laughs>